my soul Where will you go when wells run dry? And when the wind starts to blow How you gonna keep this flame alive? In the fading light when night is breaking I know you will always be Secret place where you are, where you are. I sing to you of all the ways, so my heart, so my heart. Better is a moment that I spend with you than a million other days away. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the secret place. I stand. And you will not let me go I know that I'm safe inside your hands In the fading light when night is breaking I know you will always be waiting You'll always be there I'm running to a secret place where you plug from our world. And the way that God has provided us to do that is prayer. Prayer is one of those places where we can take the things of the world and put them to the side, where we can spend time with our Heavenly Father and really listen as well as be still before our God. As the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. So I want to I want to read out of uh, Psalm 32, a couple verses for us today to kind of set the table for what I want to say. I'm going to start at verse 6 and it says this, Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. 
I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. I think that's a wonderful thing to be thinking about in terms of saying, this is what prayer is. There is this sense of needing to kind of unplug from the world at times of distress when the mighty waters are rushing ar around us and almost be, have it become a hiding place. Remember when Jesus says, when you pray, go into your secret place or your, your closet and pray. I like the phrase that uh, one author put it. He said, all of us need an external mechanism to protect our internal world. All of us need some kind of external mechanism to get out of the world, to unplug from it, to protect our internal world. Too often we don't take note of our internal world and we definitely don't spend enough time nurturing our own spirit, our own soul. And yet I think that's what God calls us to do. Because I think that's the place where we truly connect, we truly commune, commune with God, is within our soul. That's where God speaks to us. And so being able to have a place that can get us out of those places of the world that cause distraction, that cause us to look elsewhere, that cause us to think about other things, it is this place where we can go and completely and totally focus on our Lord. Whether it is in glad, glad shouts of praise or whether it is in cries of distress. This is what God desires. This is what it means to be in relationship with God. It is having this place to do, get away. And it can take any kind of form. But what it does is it, it is a mechanical thing, not in terms of having to go somewhere, although that's usually where we start. I know for me, it's a, it's a favorite chair by a window. It maybe is out in nature, maybe in the summer, maybe it's taking your coffee and sitting out on the dock at the lake. Those can all be those kind of external mechanisms. And we need those. And so if you don't have one of those, I think that's the place to start. The place to start is doing something mechanical that removes you from your normal routine, your normal interruptions, your normal distractions. Maybe it's turning off the television putting down the book, whatever it is that distracts you. And then go, at least initially, to somewhere where you can be by yourself. I love to be on my porch. You saw me do most of the, a lot of the videos during the warmer weather from the porch in our house because that's my place, particularly in the morning. But then it becomes more about the, it becomes, it becomes less about the mechanical of moving out, but it becomes a place where you are, where there is a mechanism where you begin to be able to walk through your day in that same kind of connection with God. In other words, it's not so much about going or doing or removing yourself from something, but it becomes more a part of kind of your own consciousness and how you walk through the day and your, I hate to use this word, but mindfulness of who you with and what you're doing in terms of being with God and talking and communing, communing with him as you walk through the activities of your day. That's our goal. I think that's what Paul had in mind when he says, pray at all times, or some versions say, pray without ceasing. It's as we develop this instinct to be with God and to be able to unplug from whatever is happening around us that we truly can be with God. 
And as we learn that and learn what that's about, it doesn't have to be a physical place or going somewhere, but it can be in the process of your day. And so maybe for some of you, it's about taking that next step. It's more than just doing something to kind of center yourself. Maybe you call it a quiet time. But it becomes something that you are aware of and thinking about throughout your day. I invite you to do that. Because what I think will happen is you will begin to see the world around you differently. You'll begin to see the world more from God's perspective and you will have more of God's heart as you walk into that. And so maybe it is to reach out and say a kind word to someone. Maybe it is to offer a silent prayer. Maybe it's actually even to speak hope into someone's life. I invite you to take your life with Christ seriously. For just, just just as Jesus says, you have to love me more than your parents. I have to have first priority in everything in your life. That's what's needed. That is what is required. And I invite you to step into that, even this week. Hope you have a good week. Let me pray. Lord God, thank you for today. Thank you that you have called us to yourself as we walk through our day. Learn, let us learn how to be with you in all situations so that your presence truly overwhelms us and guides us and directs us. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. I invite you to take a look at the rest of the things in uh, the news the email today that you've received and to, uh, to act on those. And I will be with you in church on Sunday. So God bless everybody. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye now.